Hello, and welcome to today's story time. Today we're going to read the story time prologue for Kegrath's Last Laugh Mar narrative campaign, the seventh mission called Suffer the Heretic. A dark figure in a flowing cape strides forcefully down a long corridor of Gothic arches, the walls adorned with images of the Emperor and scenes depicting great moments of his reign. Bursting through a pair of doors to his right, he glares at a wretched figure seated behind a large desk, poring over musty scrolls, his servo skull dancing overhead. Have you seen these images and testimonies, demanded the cape figure? Calm yourself, the hunchbacked official replied. I have not only seen them, but I have studied them, and our agents interrogated each member of the team that took these images, and each member of their command that had been involved in their debriefing. We learned a great deal from them before they were turned over to the tech priests. I suspect they will serve us well in the cataloging of our archives. He continued, If only I could have waited until they were assigned back to me, but I could not waste any time. I have been searching the records in our archives myself, dealing with this particular Xenos race. It seems as though they have been deceiving us. What we once thought were remotely controlled vehicles in their possession seem to be, in actuality, traitors forsaking their emperor. We must work to address this immediately, shouted the Inquisitor, stepping from behind one of the many racks of books and scrolls in the room. Inquisitor Dorak answered, Yes, we must and we will. I have an idea, but it is imperative we do not act in haste. Inquisitor Arnott snapped back, The Oro Xenos is rarely known for his haste now, is it? We must stop this immediately. Again, I agree with you, Arnott. But just how do you expect to find them and exterminate them? Dorek asked. We both have an interest in this new development, so quiet yourself and listen to my proposal. Inquisitor Dorek laid out his plan to his, his fellow Inquisitor. Inquisitor Arnau stood in silence, contemplating the plan he had just heard. All right, I will give you this one. We will attempt it your way this time. With a wry smile, Inquisitor Dorak replied, Good. Let me make the arrangements through an agent I know, and we can be certain of their appearance. Now study these, those testimonies again and prepare your force. A perilous opportunity has presented itself, the Dark One commented as he slowly walked with the Death Jester. Sorry? The Death Jester quizzically replied. The Dark One explained, Your Shadow Seer companion is not able to see this thread, as it involves his own fate. In fact, it involves the fate of your entire triumvirate. Tell us, what are we to do? asked the Death Jester. Go and bring your brothers to me in my hall, and I will reveal what I can to you all, ordered the Dark One. With that, the two parted for a short time. The Dark One sat on his raised chair and stared at the opening door. In his mind's eye, scenes played out, reminding him of the journey that he set these ones on so many millennia ago. He was reminded of the first dark angels to answer the call, receiving the crozier of light from the space wolves, who, after not agreeing to the Dark One's terms regarding the relic, were led into a stasis chamber of their own, so the relic could be taken from them as they were locked in a moment of time. He saw how easily the Tau turned from their own world to fight for Kegorok, and he remembered the death of the solitaire at the bite of the Hydra's blade. He snapped to the present, and before him stood the three leaders of the Grand Army. He wanted to reveal the dire prophecy he saw, but knew he could not, so he paused as he searched for the words. What is it you have to tell us? asked the Shadow Seer. The Dark One replied, We have been contacted by certain individuals from one of the human factions locked in the struggle against their great enemy. Though a rare occurrence... It is almost always a welcome sign, as our two races are among the greatest threat to and source of power for the enemy. To put aside our own race's grievances and turn on the Chaos Gods brings tremendous disruption to our foe. What do they want? asked the Shadow Seer. They propose a plan to strike near the Eye of Terror in a ruse to draw out a portion of the enemy's best fighters and ambush them with their own elite forces and our own Grand Army. This overwhelming strike, they believe, will cause a rift near the eye that will pull in a large portion of Abaddon's forces back to the Immaterium. 
The Shadow Seer, cautious of what seemed an impossibility, asked, if true, that this would be a great blow to the enemy. However, I do not see the connection between the enemy defeat and the formation of a warp rift. I have not seen anything of this sort in any of our records, or in the strands themselves. What have you seen, dare I ask? You may ask, the Dark One quietly responded. I, too, have not seen this event in the strands. It is quite unsettling. However, certain requisite events may not as of yet happen. The humans ask for a meeting of the leaders of their forces with you three representing our Grand Army. Perhaps these preparations will create the Strand, or perhaps the Strand was never to be. Go and meet them in the designated location and divine their plans and the circumstances of this course of action. Be wary of the strands around this, as you will not see your own within this, and the rest may become obscured as a result. Now, be gone and do what I command, the Dark One said sternly. With a wave of his hand, he turned to leave the room. The three stood there in silence, noting the unusual harshness in the Dark One's manner. Glancing among themselves, they turned away and made for their meeting place. In the next room, the Dark One sat gazing at the glowing, intertwining strands that danced before his seat. A melancholy overtook him as he saw the tremendous danger his commanders and friends were about to face. He saw that there was no changing the strands without this meeting. All three strands belonging to his com commanders seemed to meet at this one moment and fade shortly after. Did this mean the strands had yet to be laid? Or did it mean the three would meet their end? He could not tell, and a drop of water fell from his right cheek. Now, in this particular mission, uh, we're going to incorporate a kind of a zero fair phase, a turn zero uh, sequence. Um, I don't know that I want to give away too much in a mission preview. Okay, uh, I do want it to be a little bit of a, a surprise, but we're going to be a standard. 40k mission uh, is mechanics with a special scenario uh, board uh, in an urban setting. There will be a specific deployment zone be unique to this scenario, and deployment will be also zero. There will be a kind of a almost a pre-game uh, turn that will only involve a few units, and that will kind of set the stage for turn one. So. I'll leave the uh, preview with that. So, uh, yeah, I don't want to leave you with much more information because I do want you to be surprised by the events that are going to unfold in this very next mission. Uh, I do want to give credit to both uh, players who are playing this one because the actual idea uh, was a concept they had come up with. And I, I loved it, and I ran with it to develop this particular scenario. So I hope you enjoy it. Stay tuned for that episode. It should be out in about a week. All right. All right. See you the next video again. If you haven't, please hit that bell icon below so you'll be notified when the next narrative mission comes out. All right. Thanks. Bye bye.